This video includes a paid sponsorship from Incogni, but I'll talk more about that later. Now that the rear wheel drive version of the Model Y is available in the USA, with the $7,500 tax credit applied for those who qualify, you can purchase a brand new Model Y for under $38,000. But what type of batteries in the US made rear wheel drive Model Y and is it a good deal or is it worth the extra money to go with the long range all wheel drive version or the performance version. I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. While the rear wheel drive Model Y has been available in other markets for some time now, Tesla only recently added this back as an option for the US market. This US made version offers up to 260 miles of EPA rated range and costs $5,000 less than the long range all wheel drive version. But unlike the rear wheel drive Model Ys that are built at Gigafactory Berlin and at Gigafactory Shanghai, the USA version is not equipped with a lithium iron phosphate battery pack, but instead is equipped with a software limited 2170 battery pack. But how do I know it's a software limited battery pack and why does it even matter? Well, as I'm going to discuss, a software locked battery pack has the potential benefit of much lower battery degradation, which simply means you keep more of your range, more of your battery capacity as your battery pack ages. But before I address how I know the US made rear wheel drive Model Y has a software limited battery pack and the potential benefit of this, this portion of today's video is sponsored by Incogni. Have you ever done a Google search using your name and location? Well, if you haven't, you might be surprised how much of your personal information is easily accessible online. The truth is your personal information is being sold and published online and can be used by businesses, marketers, scammers, or other bad actors without your consent. While you can manually request removal of your information from people search websites and data brokers, it is a very tedious task because there are hundreds of commercial databases and people search sites and that number grows every year. Thankfully though, you don't have to do it yourself. Incogni is here to help and signing up for an annual or monthly subscription is easy and affordable. Once you sign up and tell them whose personal data they'll be removing, Incogni will contact data brokers on your behalf to request your personal data removal and as a huge benefit, as long as you use the service, whenever a new record pops up with your personal information on a data broker website, Incogni will automatically take care of it for you. To find out more and sign up, go over to incogni.com forward slash cleanerwatt or click the link in the video description and using this link will get you an exclusive 60% discount off of an annual Incogni subscription. Okay, I'm now going to address how I know that the USA made rear wheel drive Model Y has a software limited battery pack and is not equipped with an LFP battery pack. The first indicator of this comes from at Brandon TSLA on x.com who posted these three images showing that the rear wheel drive Model Y has an 80% daily charge limit recommendation as compared to the LFP equipped rear wheel drive Model 3, which has a 100% charge limit default. Just that one example right there makes it very clear in my mind that this version of the Model Y indeed does not have a lithium iron phosphate battery pack. When it comes to my software limited battery pack claim, at Green the Only confirmed on x.com that based on what could be found in the code of software version 2023.38.8 that the rear wheel drive Model Y pack seems to be software locked. But I'm not just going to stop there and take Green the Only's word on this because there's much, much more evidence that really points to this fact of the battery pack being software limited and it potentially makes the rear wheel drive Model Y a much better deal than it looks like on the surface. Another indication that this is indeed a software limited larger battery pack in the uh, rear wheel drive Model Y comes down to the weight difference between the long range and the rear wheel drive Model Y. You would expect a pretty major weight difference with a smaller battery pack and of course with one less motor. But when you actually look at the weight difference, the weight difference really only explains having one less motor and not a smaller battery pack. 
The next clue comes down to the impressive charging curve of the rear wheel drive Model Y, especially once the battery pack gets above an 80% state of charge. As you likely know, a battery pack can accept a higher kilowatt rate when it has a low state of charge, but as the state of charge reaches higher, like getting closer to 100%, really even passing 70, 80%, the amount of kilowatts that the battery pack can accept are limited by the BMS system and it's dropped quite low. But interestingly enough, member BZO BZO posted this on the Tesla Motors Club forum and showed the charge rates that they got with their rear wheel drive Model Y at various states of charge. And you can see that at a 99% state of charge, the car was still accepting a charge rate of 35 kilowatts. This is extremely impressive, especially when you compare it to the long range all wheel drive Model Y. So for comparison, I pulled data from this video that was published on the Out of Spec Reviews YouTube channel showing the charging curve of a long range all wheel drive Model Y and the amount of kilowatts that the battery was still receiving at a 99% state of charge was pretty much identical to what the long range all wheel drive version of the Model Y was receiving at a 90% state of charge. So based on this data, it looks like there's roughly a 10% buffer of battery capacity at the top end that's not available. So when you're at a 99% state of charge, you're really at like an 89% state of charge. And that seems to correlate with the data that I have here in this chart. And very likely based on what I can tell, it is equipped with panel Panasonic 2170 batteries, a large pack, just limited down to 260 miles of range. Okay, with that being said, I now wanna talk about the implications of this. It appears like Tesla has software limited somewhere between 10% and 20% of the battery pack for the rear wheel drive Model Y. If that is the case, once again, that means that when you charge the vehicle, you're not actually charging it to as high a state of charge as is indicated in the car. So this is actually good news for battery longevity. But in addition, it also offers the potential of more daily range. Now to be safe, my official charging recommendation would be to follow Tesla's 80% daily charge limit recommendation for the US made rear wheel drive Model Y because once again, it has nickel based batteries. However, if I personally owned a US made rear wheel drive Model Y, while I wouldn't charge it to 100% daily, I would keep that daily limit to 80% as Tesla recommends, I would be less concerned about charging it to 100% when needed. And I wouldn't feel like I'm going to destroy my battery if I had to do that a couple times a week because I needed the range for longer trips. However, if I personally owned a US made rear wheel drive Model Y, while I would follow Tesla's recommendation for daily charging and set that limit to 80%, I would be much less concerned about charging to 100% when I needed that for longer road trips, even if I needed to do that a few times a week because I needed to drive longer distances. I have enough confidence that at least 10% of the battery pack is being limited at least on the top end. So once again, a 100% state of charge very likely is not a true 100% battery state of charge. It's actually somewhere around a 90% state of charge. So while the long range all wheel drive and performance Model Y will offer more range at a 100% state of charge, charging those vehicles to 100% will tax the battery more, in my opinion, based on what I've shown here, than if you charge the rear wheel drive Model Y to 100%. Should you do it all the time? No but will it affect the battery as much as the long range version, the long range and performance version? I don't believe that it will. Another implication of a software locked battery pack comes down to the fact, as I talked about earlier, a very impressive charging curve, especially after 80%. While at first glance, it would appear like the long range all wheel drive Model Y would be much better for long road trips. If you actually look at the charging curve, the charging speeds of the rear wheel drive Model Y, there really isn't going to be much of a difference between the actual usable range that you're adding per minute of charging. Going back to the Tesla Motors Club forum, once again, member BZO BZO posted um, additional charging data for their rear wheel drive Model Y and listed the kilowatt charging power at a 20% charge all the way to an 80% state of charge. If you compare that to the long range all wheel drive Model Y, once again, using data from that out of spec reviews YouTube channel that I talked about previously, you can see that at a 50% state of charge and beyond, the charging power is actually greater for the rear wheel drive Model Y than the long range all wheel drive Model Y. This means that after a 50% state of charge, you're actually charging faster with the rear wheel drive Model Y versus the long range all wheel drive Model Y. 
In addition, if you need a little bit more range on a road trip and you need to go ahead and charge up closer to 100%, once again, even at a 99% state of charge, the rear wheel drive Model Y can still charge at around 35 kilowatts. Okay, you've stuck with me so far. I just have two more quick categories that I want to compare. The first comes down to feature differences and the next comes down to performance differences between the Model Y variants. If you're worried about what features you may lose by going with a rear wheel drive Model Y versus the long range Model Y, rest assured that based on what I can tell, besides the range difference and of course, the lack of a front drive unit, only having a single rear drive unit. It looks like the only other two features that you lose are the fog lights and the parcel shelf. However, it looks like the fog lights are actually physically there with a the rear wheel drive Model Y. They're just software limited. And you can actually buy the cargo shelf from the Tesla store if you wanna buy that after the fact and add that to your vehicle. So when it comes to feature differences, I believe the all wheel drive powertrain is a big deal because if you live in a winter climate that gets a lot of winter weather, the all wheel drive powertrain would be great to have for winter traction. But beyond that, the feature differences really aren't that great. Now, moving on, what about performance differences? The rear wheel drive Model Y takes 6.6 .6 seconds to go from zero to 60 miles per hour. The long range all wheel drive version can go zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds or the performance version 3.5 seconds. So if range is a little less important for you and you really want as much performance as possible, then the performance Model Y makes a lot of sense. However, if you want the maximum amount of range and going from zero to 60 miles per hour in 4.8 seconds is plenty for you, then the long range all wheel drive version makes a lot of sense. However, if you want, in my opinion, the best deal potentially and potentially a battery pack that could last a little longer, if I'm correct about how the battery pack is software limited, then the rear wheel drive Model Y does make a lot of sense. And in my opinion, it does make a lot of sense to go with the rear wheel drive Model Y to save that $5,000. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And also, if you own a US made rear wheel drive Model Y, I'd love to have you share your experience with that vehicle in the comments section below as well. And then I'd also like to say once again, thank you to Incogni for sponsoring this video. And as a reminder, if you go over to incogni.com forward slash cleaner watch or click the link in the video description, you can save 60% off an annual Incogni subscription. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.